Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for keeping up with this short series. If you've clicked on this video, that means you want to know what happened during the birth of my daughter <laughs> seven months ago. So what happened was, I remember my gynae was like telling me, oh, do you want the date 22-2? Because a lot of people booked that date. But then I said, it's okay. I don't want my doctor to be busy on that date. And I also don't want the rooms the private rooms to be full because i want a private room i don't want a shared room and i don't want the private rooms to be full on the day that i give birth so i said no i don't i don't care about the dates okay um just give me a date that is like less people so that i get a private room that's my main concern actually so she said okay fine um we can do friday blah 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 but then as you know from my previous story my my water actually broke on that Sunday, early morning Sunday, which is the 20th of February. So my water broke. I quickly told my husband. He just slept at like 4 a.m. But, you know, no one to blame but himself because he played game until 4 a.m. And then at 4.30, I woke him up saying that my water broke and we have to go to the hospital. So I called my parents. My dad picked up. I told him that my water broke and so I'm going to the hospital now. So I'm just gonna, you know, updating them saying that, you know, this is, this is where we are right now. So I went to the hospital. Of course, COVID, they need to check whether, you know, we are COVID positive or not, blah, blah, blah. They asked me if I was in pain and I told them, no, I'm not. I don't think I have any contractions. So uh, they called up my doctor and since I wasn't really having any contractions really, they made me wait for a while. Um, I had to take the PCR test, the nasal swab and everything to make sure that I don't have COVID. Um, my husband as well because he's gonna be there with me. I think we had to wait about an hour before the results came back and then we we're negative. We went up to the maternity ward and they attached a CTG machine on me to check on the baby's uh, heartbeat to make sure that the baby wasn't in distress or anything. The baby's heartbeat was okay, I was fine but I was leaking a lot of fluid at that time so there was no way to you know, stop labor or anything like that. But I wasn't really having much contractions, just my water just broke. But I still had my cyclage on, so I wouldn't be able to dilate open anyways. A few hours later, my doctor finally came, gave, gave me a check. And then she said, okay, so far your baby is doing good. Um, let's take out the cyclage first. They give me an epidural. I already said I am, you know, whenever I can, I want to take the epidural definitely to give birth um, because I already felt all the pain, you know, during my first pregnancy. So I didn't want to feel the whole contraction thing this time again, if I have a choice. So they gave me epidural. She took out the cyclage. Um, it took a while <laughs> and then um, the doctor said, okay, your baby's heartbeat is doing okay. I'll give you a choice whether you want to have a normal birth or a c-section. If a normal birth, I will take off your cyclage and then we'll induce labor and we'll see how it progresses from there. But if ever in any case that my baby's heartbeat is not doing so well and the baby seems to be in distress, I will have to go to emergency Caesar. But if I just opt for Caesar, then they can just straight away do that. So, of course, I said since um, everything is doing well, I want to try for normal vaginal delivery. She allowed me to do it and she said, um, okay, fine, we will add on pitocin to induce the contractions and we'll see how it goes from there. After I put on the epidural, she took out the cyclage. It took a while. Uh, apparently, she said the, the cyclage was quite embedded in my cervix, so it took a while for her to take it out, but she managed to do it, and I was quickly dilated to about 3 cm. A few hours went by. It was about, I mean, 1 to 2 p.m. I remember I was dilated to up to 7 cm I think but then I noticed that every time the contraction came the baby's heartbeat would drop well below 100 which is definitely not safe and is a sign that the baby is in distress. I could feel the contractions coming 
but I just don't feel the pain. That's what the epidural does, the magic of epidural. So when that happened, not long after that, the doctor came and said, um, your baby is in distress, so we're gonna stop the pitocin and we're gonna have to go to emergency season because she said it seems that when the contraction is getting hard, the baby's heart rate would drop well below 100, which shows that there's a chance that the baby might not survive the whole birthing process because the contraction is only going to get intense, intense, intense and more intense as it goes through the passage. I would be risking my baby's life if I insisted on getting a normal delivery so you know at that point i was already you know hours in labor so i told my doctor you know what take me to the ot just get her out safely so not long after that they added uh, more epidural on me um until i really couldn't move my legs couldn't even feel my legs it was a funny feeling and then they wheeled me into the ot was really really cold. I met my daughter in there and she's like, you seem nervous, let's put on some music. And I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. My husband was allowed to come in, but um, you know, he had to be prepped and wear all the, you know, whatever that you wear in the OT. So it took a while before he could come in. My doctor asked, um, shall we wait for your husband? But I was like, no, 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 no. We should just go ahead and just continue. I really wanted her safe out. I'm lying down on the bed. They put a screen on my chest so that I wouldn't be able to see, you know, what's going on down there. Yeah, they cut me open. I remember the, the NS doctor was beside me and he was really nice. He was telling me what was happening because everyone was busy down there, you know, just trying to get the baby out. But he was there with me and he says like, okay, um, you don't feel anything, right? It's fine. Uh, okay, good. You, it'll, be, it'll be over in a minute. I remember he told me, okay, you just hold on for a while. Just a little bit more. She's almost out. Make a lot of doa. She's coming out now. She's coming out now. And it felt like a whoop. And... Yeah, and I heard her cry. All I said was, okay, alhamdulillah, 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 alhamdulillah. Literally, I said that. Alhamdulillah, 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 alhamdulillah. I was just so grateful to hear her come out crying. And I don't know where my husband was at that time, but eventually he made it in because she was a preemie. They made sure the team in the OT was, the NS doctor was there. My ONG doctor was there. There was a neonatologist as well um, in case uh, she comes out with any preterm birth complications. But Alhamdulillah, she turned out fine. We couldn't really do a skin to skin because, uh, you know, Caesar and, you know, I was covered until here. So they could only put her like on my neck. So they put her on my neck and I saw like videos, they romanticized this part of giving birth where if I, when you have finally, you hold the baby on your skin for the first time and how beautiful the moment was. Well, to me, it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> They put her beside me and all I I remember just thinking, okay, alhamdulillah, 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 I made it, she's safe outside here. Please take her away from me and please sew me up quickly. Um, I really want to get out of here. I think my husband went to follow her to the nursery or whatever. I don't know, but then, yep, they started to sew me back up again. That took some time. It felt weird, as in, I don't feel pain, but I do feel like if people are like, tugging on you like uh, uh, uh. I don't know it was uncomfortable and I was like really shivering like uh, the whole time really really shivering the whole time I think it took like another half an hour after they sewed me back up and they pushed me outside I really tried my best to like calm myself down and stop shivering but I could not and then after a few minutes there they pushed me back to my um, room in the maternity ward. My husband was there. I asked him like, is, is the baby okay? How, how, how is she and everything? So he took videos. Obviously I couldn't walk or anything that time. So I gave birth at about 5 p.m. or so. Um, I had my epidural uh, attached until the next day. I was just so tired and so, 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 so grateful that I can finally say Alhamdulillah, my baby 
is alive and healthy. She's here on this side of the earth with me. And I am so grateful and blessed at the moment. But also at the same time, I just want to work on my recovery as well. My husband went to the nursery, showed me videos of her. She had no problems with prematurity, except for that she was too small to regulate her temperature on her own so she had to be in an incubator but her lungs was fine she didn't have problem feeding or anything but she did have a feeding tube for the first I think maybe three four days of her life but then after that she was able to suckle already which was amazing she was born 1.81 kg only she was really tiny but very healthy. I stayed at the hospital for a while because she was, you know, she had to stay at the hospital. Alhamdulillah, she didn't have to spend not a single day in the NICU. She only had to stay at the special care nursery where they continue to monitor her in the incubator for, I think she only stayed in the incubator for about also uh, maybe four or five days. And then she, she continued uh, to just be in the normal baby caught at the nursery. She just had to stay at the nursery because she had to gain weight before they could release her. She had jaundice but only for a little bit, alhamdulillah for her, during her nursery time so she had the phototherapy that she needed. I went to see her every day, um, I worked on breastfeeding, um, I would pump and send her um, the milk that I had. It wasn't easy, but at that point, I was just so grateful to know that she is breathing, she is healthy, and she's, she's just perfect, alhamdulillah. And if you had a C-section before, the day after they took out the epidural and the first walk to the toilet was really tough and painful. It's really painful to walk. But I was scared to poop, to even... Um, pee, to even move, to cough, to sneeze. I was so lucky. I prayed to God to not make me cough or sneeze. I think I did not cough or sneeze for a whole week until like, I was like a little bit more healed. I, I think I was like in pain and barely could walk. After 10 days, only that I would be able to, you know, walk better and do things with uh, less help from other people uh. and imagine that I had a c-section and it was hard and I still have to go back and forth to the hospital after I was discharged my baby was not discharged yet so I still had to go to the hospital every day before we are able to get our baby discharged they have this thing called a uh, room in period where I will have to be with my baby at the hospital for a day or two and see how I manage to take care of my preemie baby myself basically but my husband of course can join and help me so we had our room in day and seems like everything is fine the nurses helped a lot in teaching us how to take care of the baby, what to do when this happens, this and that, about breastfeeding and how to bathe the baby, how to clean the baby and things like that. We learned quite a lot of things during our days just going back and forth to the um, SEN, the special care nursery. Yeah, the nurses were good enough to convince the doctor that um, you know, my husband and I are ready to take home our baby. I really wanted her to be with me because I wanted to breastfeed her because I wasn't able to get her to latch on to me very well and the fact that I am away from her makes it harder to really practice on that latch. So yeah, eventually after about 12 or 13 days at the hospital, my baby was finally discharged and we finally get to take her home and then we spent the next few months back in Penang where my mom is and my whole family is there to give me support and I just feel like I'm safe at my parents place because they're my parents and they're doctors and yeah I have my sister is a doctor my brother-in-law is also a doctor so I'm in a house full of doctors I feel safer to bring my preemie baby back to a house full of doctors you get what i mean it was a really roller coaster ride for me my whole pregnancy was full of anxiety 
I envy people who get to enjoy their pregnancy because, you know, once you have a miscarriage, it kind of takes that innocence, that naivety away from you. So your subsequent pregnancy, you always have that doubt in you that whether you are able to bring this baby to term or not. I'm forever grateful. Allah definitely answered my prayers. I have no doubt everything that has happened and Allah has blessed me with is because of Him and because He heard my prayers and the prayers of people around me. Every day when I was pregnant, almost practically every day, I'm like asking my best friends, my parents, just everyone like, please, please, please don't ask for me because I don't know whose du'a that might be accepted by Allah. That's it. That is the end of the series. I won't be pregnant every anytime soon, uh, inshallah. But I hope and I pray to everyone who is, who has had a miscarriage, um, and is looking to get pregnant again. I hope you guys don't lose hope, and continue to pray to Allah or whatever your faith is. Continue to pray. Prayers can move mountains. I just wanted to say to everyone if you've had a miscarriage know that it's okay the time will come and if you think something is wrong please get yourself checked by a specialist so that they can better diagnose on you know what's the issue because i am so glad that i went to a specialist um, and did what I did in order to have my baby safely earthside. I hope you guys are blessed abundantly with happy marriages and happy kids and happy families and that I want you to know that you are not alone and it helps to talk to someone if you really need to. And if you ever know someone who has gone through a miscarriage, who's had a pregnancy loss, or infant loss, give support, the right kind of support. I hope you guys know that to your fellow friends who have experienced loss because I know firsthand that it's not easy and although we may look on the outside strong and happy and seemed unbothered, but the grief and the pain of losing a baby even if it was just a few weeks in your womb the pain is very much real yeah i guess you guys know a little bit more about me something that's really personal but i hope it has helped at least some of you guys out there and i love you guys so much and i'll see you guys on my next video inshallah bye